Hello there, I'm Gloria Makarenko, and today we are coming to you from Vancouver's Christmas Market. This is our Vancouver. Coming up, the taste of the season offered by the market's unique vendors and handicrafts built to last. But first, why this little market fills our hearts in a big way every year. Hello there. Well, we are at a Chris Kindle market. This is a German tradition where towns would host their own unique market with local artisans and food. And Vancouver has been holding its own version for the past 11 years. And Denise Wagner is with us today. Denise is in charge of this event. Hello there. Hi, thanks for being here. Happy holidays to you. You too. Thanks for having <laughs> us. So let's talk about just the, the ambiance, the atmosphere of, of a German market. What are you, what are yeah. you creating here? Well, we're, we're to start really. It's all about the sights, sounds and smells at the market. Once you're through the gates, you really feel like you're at this little wooden village and you really don't feel like you're at Jackpot Plaza anymore you get to experience some things that you maybe haven't experienced before it's just a altogether very charming feeling <laughs> it is charming and when yeah. we talk about sort of being a typical German market how would you compare this to to what you would encounter in yeah. a small town in Germany this time of year it's very close to the original yeah. um, I mean we've really brought that German authenticity to the market you know all of the little vendors in the wooden huts but also some of the bigger ornaments in the back for example, the Christmas pyramid, the giant Christmas tree that we have, all of those things you typically find at German Christmas markets as well. Let's talk about the vendors. What yes. kind of variety do you bring every year? So many things to experience. We've got over 80 vendors at the Christmas market this year, which is more than we've ever had before. You'll experience over 30 different foods and beverages, uh, specifically authentic uh, foods from Germany, like schnitzel, the pork hogs, the sausages, the, the glue vine, uh, apple cider, all of those yummy th things that people have come to love over the years, but also many craft items so the traditional German nutcrackers ornaments different prepackaged foods that we have there's a lot to experience well there is and I wish this was smell of vision because it does it smells it smells yeah. cozy if it that's does. possible I'm getting some <laughs> sweet I'm getting yeah. some you know some grease <laughs> grease in a good way yes. I mean that and then again mulled wines and drinks yeah. and warm drinks and things like that which is just really lovely now let's talk about last year yeah there's not a lot to talk about because you couldn't have you couldn't have the yes. the market. Yeah. So, it was a challenging one. Yeah. So how how challenging was it to start up again yeah. um, from scratch? Uh, pretty much, yeah. It was really challenging. I mean, we obviously kept in, in touch with all of our vendors. We didn't really give up until the very last minute. We wanted to support the vendors as well. That's why we put together gift bags with them and pr purchased people for were able to purchase them. But it's been tough for them because this this the Christmas market is really the main source of income for many of them. So we're really happy that we were able to support them throughout this and have them come back this year for you know a bigger season. And what about some of the vendors that have been with you through thick and thin yeah. throughout the years? Who stands out for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, the food is definitely something that sticks out to everyone because it's just, you know, it's everything for the senses, the smells, you know, the flavors. But there's also a lot of uh, merchandise options to explore at the market and more than, than ever before. Well, there's different jewelry options. So we have a whole new area, the Gourmetstrasse, with over 15 prepackaged foods. So, for example, mulling spices, if you want to make your own mulled wine at home. Uh, roasted nuts, chestnuts, olive oil. So if you want to create a Christmas feast at home, this is the place to go shop for it. Okay. Now, I know we're, you know, it's an earlier part of the day right now, but you do have a tower here with uh, potential for some entertainment. So how yeah. important is that to the overall atmosphere? It really adds to the atmosphere. We do have live entertainment every day. So everything from jazz to pop, uh, really something for everybody on the market. And I think people really love our flying stage because you're able to see it from everywhere on the market, but it does really add to the whole atmosphere. For sure. Okay, we are still in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, yes, we've got restrictions and you and I are not masked, but we are double vaccinated and we are in open air and all of those things. So that that's great. What about the COVID protocols? Yeah, so we really wanted to make sure we bring back a safe experience to everyone, for everybody involved in the market. So we do have a vaccine mandate in place. So everybody has to be fully vaccinated to attend the Christmas market. In addition to that, we really wanted to make make sure to spread out the, the people or the traffic on the market. So everybody has to pre-book a 30 minute time slot. People can stay as long as they like, but that just helps out spread the people on the market. Well, sure. And would you say there's sort of prime time 
prime time at the market. I mean, we're not really benefiting from the, the lights because I know you have so many trees and light displays yes. here as well. So that's always obviously better in the in the dark. But yes. what, what, what do you think? There's two things about the market. So many people have come to experience the lights. So uh, day, uh, light uh, night times and, and the weekends, basically the peak times. Uh, but something to explore, if you really want to experience a different Christmas market, come during the day and weekdays. It's not as crowded. You get it, uh, get a chance to talk to all of the exciting stories from the vendors. So it's something something new to experience. Wonderful. And until when are you open? How, how long is the market last this year? Christmas Eve, December 24th. Oh, <laughs> is that typical? It is, yes. Typical, just take it yeah. to Christmas. Okay, yeah. well, very happy holidays to you. And thank you so much, You Denise. as well, thank you. I'm Johnny, and this is our Vancouver. All right, it's time for one of our favorite features. This is where we get to showcase a number of the photographs that are sent in by you, our audience. This first one is from Jason Cole. Jason captures the Christmas crane on Alberni Street. This is a city seasonal tradition. Well done, Jason, thank you so much. And Bikram Rijal took his daughter to Dog Mountain to snowshoe. What a lovely shot there, Bikram, thank you. And finally, Tian Tian was out on a snowy day in New Westminster and found some snowberries. So fun and so seasonal. Tian, thank you very, very much. And do send us more. You can email your photos to us, bcphotos at cbc.ca. That's bcphotos at cbc.ca. Now, did you know you can cut down your own Christmas tree on Crown land? Well, in case you didn't know, now you do, but there's a little bit of extra work involved. John Hernandez takes you through the whole process. So it's the holidays, and what better way to get into a merry mood than to cut down your own Christmas tree? Well, to do it legally, the first thing you should know is there's some red tape, and not the festive kind. You need to register for a permit on the BC government's website. It's quick, easy, and free. Print off the paperwork and the adventure begins. Before you take off on your Christmas adventure, make sure you have your tree cutting permit with you at all times. Some other useful items, a first aid kit, some rope, and the right tool for the job. In BC, you can't just chop down a tree anywhere. Odds are you'll have to go on a bit of a trek. Trusty online maps from the province show you exactly where you can cut, depending on which region you live. For us, that meant a trip up the Sea to Sky Highway north of Vancouver. Let's go. Be prepared for a hike in. We're here just outside of Squamish. This is the closest place you can come to if you live in Metro Vancouver to cut down your own tree. And if you do have a permit, you'll have to do it underneath power lines. That's because these areas are regularly cleared. Head to high ground to get a good view of what's in the area. And don't be afraid to size up any potential candidates. Before you start cutting, make sure you find the perfect tree for you. I like this one. Make sure it fits right on top of your car. And when you start cutting, make sure you do it right at the base. Nothing to it. Now, a lot of people might come out here with the preconceived idea that the trees out here are full and picturesque like you'd see in the movies, when in fact, a lot of them are actually quite sparse, but they're still beautiful because you cut it down yourself. <laughs> Safely secure the tree to the roof of your car or even squeeze it inside if you can, then you're ready to hit the road. Steady as a rock. Well, she's all loaded up. Now it's time to head home, bust out the decorations, and sip some eggnog. John Hernandez, CBC News, Squamish. 
There is so much to see here at the Christmas market, and we are at one of the most popular stalls right now. This is the Nutcracker House, and Charlene Lardner is with us now. And Charlene, you have been coming here for how long? Well, it's like 11 years. The market has been going for 11 years. So welcome to the Vancouver Christmas market. Well, and this what, is the Nutcracker House. What keeps you coming back? You know, if people ask that every year because we fly 17,000 miles to come here, there is a community here. Uh, Malta and Denise have actually put together a community. So we become like a family. We share a lot. If we're getting a little bit cold, somebody will come here and say, do you need a glue wine? SOS, do you need some um, roasted chestnuts? We really look after each other. So I think that, obviously I love Christmas. I love Vancouver and I love Germany. That's so I think it's a winning combination. That does sound like a winning combination. Do you find you have repeat customers, people who may be <gasps> coming back year after year to supplement their decoration collection? I forgot about them. That's one of the reasons as well why we come here. We've got the most amazing customers, genuine people. They come here, they show us on um, sometimes FaceTime. Um, I would actually even like to know Newfoundland. Um, wife has to stay at home, husband comes, does a FaceTime and then chooses mm -hmm. for the uh, next year what they are actually wanting to put out. So a uh, very strong, loyal customer base. I used to call them old customers and then I realized, oh dear, that's not the right word. No. It is loyal customers. <laughs> loyal customers. So, and they tell us now what they want. So it makes it actually much easier. You have so much to choose from here. These beautiful candles that I Thank can see. You. I mean, those are gorgeous. And what have you got here? Okay. Who's this fellow? Well, he's a little surprised because when you usually have a look at a nutcracker, you think it's just a nutcracker. But this little nutcracker, the toy maker, has something really special. He's like not only a nutcracker, but he actually says, listen, I have a little incense area. If you put an incense cone and then you light it, it actually smokes. So it's really absolutely delightful. A smoking nutcracker. <laughs> a smoking nutcracker. What are some other Thank popular you. items? What's this here? Okay. So that is actually the town of Siphon. This is a church. Mm -hmm. And uh, these carolers for the four Advent Sundays actually go out through the community and sing. So That's all our ornaments come from beautiful. the town of Siphon. Is this a place for a candle? That is for a place oh. for a candle. They love light. I love everything you have here. Thank you Charmaine, so much. Charmaine, very happy holidays to you and uh, see you next year, imagine. Yes, please. Everybody needs to come to the Vancouver Christmas Market. It's delightful here. Für Weihnachten. That is Merry Christmas from German. Thank you very much, Gloria. It's been such a treat. Coming up, CBC meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff answers audience questions about the year of intense weather that we've had. Thank you to everyone who has been sending such great Science Smart questions all year round. And what a year it's been with back to back to back extreme weather events here in British Columbia. The fingerprint of climate change stamped hard on all of them. I wanted to take a moment to answer a few that I haven't been able to get to yet. Let's get right into it, shall we? First question from Vinit, uh, who asks, with the recent atmospheric river events, I get the notion of an atmospheric river holding more water vapor, but how is it transported to our latitudes? The latest research suggests that a cold front just ahead of its passage, southerly winds uh, might pull up filaments of water vapor from the main stream that runs around the equator. And once those filaments start to make their way northward, uh, they become rivers unto themselves. Okay, next question, John Betts wonders why typically these deluges have been described as Hawaiian expresses. Some of them look like they're coming uh, actually trans-Pacific and you're right. We call the ones that come from the Hawaiian Islands Pineapple Express colloquially, but atmospheric rivers can originate from far across the Pacific. Colloquially, we sometimes call those uh, tropical punches, but they're all under the umbrella term of atmospheric rivers. 
Charles from Cranbrook has a question about feedback loops, specifically to uh, Earth's albedo. Now, albedo is a measurement of how uh, reflective or absorbent the surface of something is, and it uh, is connected to the darkness. So if an object is uh, closer to black in color, it will absorb, absorb much more solar radiation uh, than if something was white, much more will get reflected. So thinking about the Arctic, uh, the Arctic sea ice uh, melting more and more to reveal the dark ocean surface that in turn absorbs more solar radiation, more melting, and we get into one of these positive fe feedback loops. Mist or drizzle? Marie wants to know the difference between the two. Well, there is technically a meteorological definition for the two, uh, and they come down to the size of the water droplets. Mist water droplets are so tiny that it feels like they're being suspended in air. In fact, according to the World Meteorological Organization, they're only 10 to 15 microns in diameter. Now, drizzle is also very small, but they're between 0.5 or smaller millimeters in diameter. And now, you're science smart. If you have any more great science questions, send me a tweet or an email and I'll try to get it answered. Thanks. Hello there, you are watching Our Vancouver. I'm Gloria Makarenko and today we are coming to you from the Vancouver Christmas Market. And right now we are in front of the Fish House and Richard Fung is with us. Richard, hello there. Hi there, Gloria. What nice do you love about being here at the Christmas Market? Oh yeah, Christmas Market. Of course, everybody loves Christmas. The energy, the people, and everything, of course, the food, right? Of course, yeah. the food. So let's talk about the food here okay. at the fish house. What are some of your popular dishes? Uh, the most popular dish is the fish brushing, uh, straight from Germany. Yes. You know, it's a pickled herring sandwich. Yes. Yeah, it's traditionally made with, uh, you know, crusty bread, uh, some rumley and the pickles, uh, pickled herring and the red onions. That sure. is lovely. Now you've yep. also got some soups, some borscht and some French onion oh, soup. Yeah. So a They're lot delicious. of things to yeah. keep you nice and warm when the weather gets cold. Oh, for sure. Why don't you prepare this for us? Okay, for sure. Where would you start? So let's start with, you know, uh, spraying some remoulade. Right. What's in there? Mayonnaise and pickles? Mayonnaise, pickle, ketchup, and some uh, mustard. Ooh. Fancy sauce. Yeah. Fancy and then sauce. Let's start with some uh, organic greens. Love it. Okay. How and would you describe the atmosphere here at the market, Richard? Oh well, yeah, it's filled with you know spirit, uh, Christmas spirit, and everything like happiness. Yeah. I see everybody smiling, right? Yes. Like. That's how, lo how long have you been bringing food to the market? Uh three years. Three already. years. Yeah. Now? Three okay. Years. What was it like last year for you when you couldn't do it? Sad. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. I still you know stay home, right? quarantine with you know n not spending time but soon parties I guess okay wait a <laughs> second now you've put on the pickled herring yeah pickled, pickled herring red onions and the pickles and the pickles has got to have a little bit of a kick to it yeah. right the yeah. pickles are important yeah. and capers that's too and uh, no no capers No capers. okay yeah. what's this in the last one? Oh, that's caper that, but, but you're not the capers no, don't go on this no, sandwich no. that's for another yeah, for another, another concoction yep, all exactly. right and then nice and simple right and then you know we have the crusty bread and then we just put it there and that's how we prepare it. Tell me again what German. this is called? Uh, fish brushing. So pickle. Fish brushing. Yeah, so it's pickle herring sandwich. Yeah. Richard Fung, thank you so much. Yeah. And thank best you of the holidays it. to you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Isn't that beautiful? This, this is, is our Vancouver. Vancouver. If you want to go and see some live music, Vancouver's Mother Mother plays the Vogue Theatre on Thursday, December 30th. They're about to go on an international tour, so it's the last local show from them for a while. I got cars, we was beaters and designers on my team. I got braiders, hella famous, that I'm silent on my team. And my limousine, don't I look steezy? Next to mine, did you queen? Yeah. And the Snotty Nose Res Kids play the Commodore, also on Thursday, December 30th. Hey, I'm Grant Lawrence here from CBC Music. Okay, if you were to take a look back 
at music in 2021, it sure felt as if it was the year of the rock anniversary in Canada. That's right, all sorts of seminal albums and bands and record companies celebrated big anniversaries, and many of the labels are re-releasing the albums in deluxe anniversary packaging just in time for the holidays. So here's your quick run through through some of the most notable rock anniversaries in Canadian music in 2021. Well, that's one of the best songs from what is generally considered one of the greatest albums of all time. Just a quick sip there of Joni Mitchell, originally from Saskatchewan, performing Case of You from her classic record, Blue, which was released 50 years ago in 1971. Now for something completely different. Yeah, that is some very rare footage of the Vancouver band DOA performing a song from their legendary album, Hardcore 81, which celebrates its 40th anniversary this year. That record was a hallmark because, trivia fans, it was the very first time the term hardcore was used to define a musical genre. Okay, moving on, how about these apples? Yeah, that's the Tragically Hip Canada's band with Little Bones from the album Road Apples. That was their first record to go number one in Canada back in 91, which means that record turns 30 this year. It's been remastered and re-released in a five LP box set or four CD set with a whole bunch of extras. Others celebrating rock anniversaries this year include the 10th anniversary of Dan Mangan's breakout album, O Fortune, the 30th anniversary of Halifax Heroes Sloan, and the 30th anniversary of indie rock label Mint Records in Vancouver. But hey, check this out. It's been 40 years since Neil Osborne and Brad Merritt got together at a high school in Tawasson, BC to form 5440. What is wrong with me? I'm not supposed to be happy all the time. But I'm willing to bet it doesn't matter yet. As long as she doesn't mind telling lies to me. Lies to me. I don't want to know what she means. Crazy video there, very 90s, and a great, great song. Dare I say underrated. That is 5440 with She Lies to Me, that video from 1996. 5440 is celebrating their 40th anniversary this year. And did you know that despite multiple platinum and gold records and tons of hit singles like that one, 5440 has never won a Juno Award. Come on! Canadian Music Hall of Fame at the very least. 5440 or fight is right. 5440 years. Happy holidays and happy rock anniversaries, everybody. I'm Grant Lawrence from CBC Music, and I'll check in with you again in the new year. Coming up, small business owners mull over the hard year that they've had with the pandemic and supply chain shortages. Thank you. 
Hello there, you're watching our Vancouver. I'm Gloria Makarenko and we're at the Vancouver Christmas Market. You know, this is the second Christmas season with a pandemic and small business owners have been weathering staff shortages and supply chain issues. Well, the CBC's Ian Hanuman Singh speaks to three people who have become experts in working around all those woes. Holiday shopping is in full swing across the country and after a long, difficult 21 pandemic months, it appears Canadians are ready to spend. The Retail Council of Canada expects that holiday spending in 2021 will match 2019 levels. With shoppers shelling out nearly $800 each on average, that would be a 12% rise from last year. The share of online shopping continues to grow, but the Retail Council is estimating about 63% of Canadian holiday purchases will be in stores. We thought tonight would be a good time to check in on some Canadian storekeepers to see how the season is uh, going for them. And joining us now, Joanna Milios, owner of the Granville Island Toy Company in Vancouver, Miguel San Vicente, owner of a different book list in Toronto, and Alex McLean is the owner of East Coast Lifestyle Clothing in Halifax. Welcome to all of you. And, and Joanna, let me start with you. Uh, Christmas just a couple of weeks away, hard to believe. Uh, as we head into this final stretch, how have things been for you? Uh, really busy, actually. It's interesting to uh, hear those numbers from 2019 because during the pandemic last year in 2020, we actually ended up doing better than we did in 2019. Uh, I think that was the silver lining in the COVID cloud because more uh, people in the community were looking to shop local uh, instead of online, which was a huge plus. And this year, we're keeping the same pace as last year. And a lot of people started shopping earlier uh, this year, having heard about all the possibilities of uh, an inventory shortage, which we are seeing. Yeah, I'm going to ask you more about that in just a sec. But let me go all the way across the country to Alex in Halifax. Uh, Christmas season or holiday season for you, how's it been? Very busy as well. We've had our, our best month in brand history was November 2021. We just got through it. And we're still packing orders from the Black Friday sale. So really huge thanks to all the people that support our brand. And we're sending stuff all over the world, but we see a lot of local people coming into our stores and to our retailers to also buy local as well. So all three of these stores in different parts of the country and, and different kinds of businesses. Miguel, you have a bookstore, but uh, kind of a, a, a particular market, a, a niche bookstore, I guess we could call it. And, and how has uh, November and December been for you? Well, um, of course, we, we serve the Black and Caribbean community mostly, but we've noticed uh, since the pandemic, and we have really benefited from the fact that um, uh, the uh, murder of George Floyd really produced an explosion of, of interest by people in looking at society and the inequities in society, the racism, white supremacy, and all these kinds of issues. So we got an explosion of orders out of the, uh, uh, just around June of last year. Tremendous increase in orders on our online orders. And this has, a lot of it has, has um, sort of abated since, since about January, but uh, ongoing, there's still a large number of business that we're doing over and above what we did in 2019. And this has continued on to this Christmas season and also from um, the holiday season last year, also uh, we have about the same amount of business. Yeah, yeah. So you 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 know mentioned a couple of interesting things. First of all, you know how how the the news events have affected your business in particular, but then also something that uh, all retailers are dealing with, which is the mix between online and in store. Joanna, what's it been like for you? Uh, we are still seeing a lot of people coming in online um, shopping in store. Online has been as equally as busy, um, and we normally tend to see an increase every Christmas in our online sales, without a doubt. Um, I'm still getting the feeling that some people don't want to shop in-store. They'd rather come quickly pick it up or have it shipped to them, and then there are people who are coming in-store, it's been great because they've been very patient in that we're only allowing so many people in the store at a single time, because of course COVID concerns still continue. So um, it's I would say probably maybe a 70-30 split, 30 online, 70 in-store. 
Yeah, which, which is very much in keeping with what the Retail Council is projecting for all businesses, from you know shopping malls to, to, to big box stores to, to stores like yours. Alex, what about you? What about this mix of, of online and in-store? And also, if you see any trends that way. Yeah, it's funny. It, it, uh, when COVID hit, we were about 75% brick and mortar pre-COVID. And everything's pivoted now to be the exact opposite. So 75% of our sales are coming from online. We had to offer free shipping over $100 anywhere in Canada just to compete with our competitors that are all doing stuff like that. And we've really focused on our online marketing a lot. So we hired a videographer, a photographer, uh, more web team behind the scenes. And really, that's allowed the brand to grow uh, to the next level. So we're thankful that instead of, uh, you know, putting our feet up, per se, with COVID, that we really worked hard and we pivoted the company to be more of an online-faced company. Quick question I want to ask all three of you to finish off. We've heard about uh, supply chain issues in some businesses, uh, labor shortages. And uh, Miguel, let me start with you. Is there anything that's making it difficult to, to, to stay as busy as you'd like to be this uh, holiday season? Yes, well, what we find is that, um, of course, the uh, news is out there of different supply line challenges. And, and this is also relevant to the book industry. There's paper shortages, and many um, publishers have, have trouble keeping books in stock because um, of that reason. Uh, books are not getting reprinted in time and all those sort of things. So what we find as a result is people are buying a lot of gift cards. Gift cards have become, become one of our main uh, selling items uh, during this holiday season because of many titles not being in stock. Mm -hmm. We got about two minutes left, so one minute each, uh, Joanna and uh, and Alex, to you. And Joanna, I'll begin. You, you mentioned you are having some supply chain issues at the toy store. Oh, absolutely. And I kind of anticipated this from the beginning of the year because, of course, when COVID hit, factories were shut down, so things weren't getting manufactured. Once the manufacturing started again, then we had a huge uh, shortage of uh, containers being able to make it across the ocean. Um, and so we have definitely seen, um, you know, I should say suppliers are basically telling us from about June of this year, here's our list of what we have, get it now, because you may not see it later. And that's pretty much what we're seeing. And you had the additional problem, I guess, of, you know, trucks aren't going to be able to deliver stuff from the rest of Canada, yes, of or at course. least have had a problem with the flooding, right, and the, and the highways. In BC, that yes. definitely, yeah, that definitely yeah. Uh, backed up some of our shipments arriving. I had one shipment that left uh, November 1st, and it didn't get here until just a few days ago. <laughs> huh. Uh, Alex, uh, what about for you, I, whether it's uh, labor shortages or supply chain issues, uh, either of those things affecting you? Yeah, we're in the same boat. We had a big fleece shortage this year where we couldn't get enough material to produce our hoodies. The hoodie that I'm wearing today is made in Truro, Nova Scotia, just down the street from here, essentially. And we were only able to get a certain amount produced for the time that we needed before the holidays. So everything kind of hit us pretty quick. And we ordered everything in the summer and in the fall for, for the Christmas season. And a lot of it's just not going to arrive. We had a lot of shortages and uh, we just kind of made the most of what we had. But really, you know, when I when I hear all three of you and look at your faces, it feels like uh, this is going to be a pretty good holiday season for all of you. Am I right? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I think all so. right. Well, and, you, that, and you can't yes, really worry definitely. about what you know you can't control. I look at it that way. Absolutely. I know, Joanna, you're a veteran at this business. You've seen the ups and downs, but it's nice to uh, see that there, there are some ups for, for all of you. And uh, thank you very much for speaking with us this evening. Thanks for having good us. Water. Coming up, Santa is back in malls and at festivals, but your visit with the big man in red is a little bit different this year. Hello there, welcome back to Our Vancouver. I'm Gloria Makarenko at the Vancouver Christmas Market. Now we haven't seen Santa yet, but the big man in red isn't far away. We can talk to Santa this year, but anyone hoping to take a picture with him is going to have to follow some very strict rules. Of course, it's an effort to keep St. Nick and his helpers safe. Just watch. It's been two years since he decked the halls of CF Richmond Centre. Merry Christmas. 
Ho, ho, ho. Now Santa is back. During COVID, I haven't seen Santa. I only saw Santa on my mom's phone for two years. What did you ask? I want uh, Lego. What about you? Godzilla. Oh, Godzilla. Gone are the days where you go to the mall and line up for a photo with Father Christmas. Now, you have to schedule an appointment to meet him. Once you get there, you're not allowed to touch, hug, or sit on his lap. Some establishments require children 12 and above to show proof of vaccination. Many people appear to be happy with the new rules. We understand the situation, right? I mean, there's a lot of people in and out. So like once in a while, you know, a different setup, we don't mind it. It's the first time I see another dead. And I think this is just excellent because you have so many good ideas and it's more like a family photo. You can have a family and you can have everybody in. I think it's just beautiful. The demand for a photo with Santa is high in Metro Vancouver. And in some places, slots are selling out fast. People are being encouraged to book their appointments early or risk another year without getting a chance to meet St. Nick. Did you address it to Santa Claus, yes. North Pole? Ho, ho, ho. Philip Aguera, CBC News, Vancouver. You get you ready? Ho ho hello guys and welcome to our holiday extravaganza. I won't tell you which holiday we're celebrating because I don't celebrate any of them. Today we'll be making your very own indoor DIY snowballs because we all know how hard it is to come by snow at this time of year. Here's what you need! Let's get started. Take your cornstarch and put it into your mixing bowl. Next, take your shaving cream and spray it into the bowl. My, isn't this festive? Lightly <coughs> sprinkle. <coughs> and now it's time to mix your mixture to its desired level of snowballosity. I can't, I can't, must mix. <sighs> this is a great craft to do at home with the kids or maybe for a holiday party. I don't move. This is very hot and it will come out very slowly. What do you want from me? <sighs> And maybe in the holiday spirit, we should do it together. Got big plans for Christmas? Mm -hmm. It's always a good time. Mm -hmm. Big snow guy. Mm -hmm. And there you have it your very own DIY indoor snowballs. Perfect for making with a friend. Mm. <laughs> 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 Now, if you have young children in your life, you're likely buying them toys. And these days, there's a lot of choice. But 31 years ago, parents were having a tough time finding the perfect gift. And CBC Television did a story about it at the time. When Santa goes shopping this year, he'll find nearly 40,000 toys to choose from. But he'll find fewer new ones than last season. And many of these will just be old ideas and new packages. There are fewer innovative toys and they just don't seem to be as great. Uh, at the Toy Council this year, we looked at 275 toys. Only 42% of those received our highest rating of three stars. That's unusual. Usually it's about 52 to 55%.
Taking their cue from Barbie, 31 years young this year and thriving, many manufacturers are playing it safe, adding on to past hits rather than taking a chance on unproven products. That means last year's domino rally is this year's neon domino rally. It means games and gizmos galore for the video game system you already own, but no radically different home entertainment systems themselves. And it means hundreds of licensed products, new kids on the block dolls, Simpsons collectibles, and turtles everything. The manufacturers are counting on the already recognizable name and the advertising emphasis on collectability to reduce the risk in introducing a new toy item. It helps to sell the toy. That's not to say that you can't find anything original to put under your Christmas tree. Irwin has come out with this innovative art toy. It helps teach kids how to draw accurately with correct perspective and proportion. Hasbro is offering Go-Go Pop, all the fun of having a pet without any of the bother. And nearly all the major companies have introduced new dolls, each with a different gimmick. Is your baby a boy or a girl? Mattel's Magic Nursery lets each mother find out for herself whether her baby is a boy or girl. Just dip its clothes in water. But all in all, if you're looking for something original, you may have to wait for next year. When we bring you stories here at CBC Vancouver, we have award-winning photographers out capturing the images that say so much. Still images add context and bring a lot more to the understanding of an event or an issue. Here are some of the latest from what was happening this past week. We have had such an incredible time here at the Vancouver Christmas Market. And on behalf of all of us at our Vancouver and CBC British Columbia, we wish you very happy holidays. Bye-bye for now.